Hello and welcome. It's Saturday, May the 26th, 2007, and you are listening to the very first live in the moment Hope It Makes Sense podcast thingy from the shy singer songwriter, otherwise known as Vicki Flowith, aka Hummingbird, on many songwriting boards. Welcome to my podcast. Uh, I'm practically brain dead, which I know is common in my household, uh, but even more so tonight because I've spent the last couple of nights just for some reason not being able to sleep well and managed to muddle my way through my days and my lessons, uh, but not never knowing if I really made any sense. So as I talk to you tonight, I don't know if I'll make any sense whatsoever. And uh, see, I've already said that about three times, so there's a good example. So I wanted to talk about something tonight, and I guess the issue I wanted to talk about is age. Whoa, age. You know, American Idol auditions. You have to be between 18 and 28, or something like that, or maybe it's 12 and 28. In any case, you can be young, but you can't be old. And uh, you see that all the time in listings, looking for artists too. Must be between the ages of 17 and 25. Now, I have absolutely nothing against young, talented, creative, cool, hip people going out there and doing their thing and people buying their records or buying their books or whatever it is that they're doing creatively. I think that's really cool. I have nothing against that. But what I do have a big problem with is this idea that somehow um, you're less of an artist or less capable or less marketable or whatever it is once you've reached your 29th birthday. And one of the reasons I'm talking about this is it comes up a fair bit. You know, you probably have a couple of discussions like this at least a couple of times a year, if not more. And of course, recently there was a big discussion about this on one of the songwriting boards that I belong to. It basically said, if you're a female singer, you better be sexy, young and pretty, or you haven't got a hope in hell of being signed by a label. Well, I have a lot of issues with that because first of all, uh, I don't define success for a singer as being signed to a label. People go out and create their own labels. You can create your own label. I have my own. I've been signed by a label and I'm over 29, just barely. And then, you know, the other thing that bothers me about it is this idea that somehow uh, you're less capable or less creative or less thought provoking or have less to say or something once you've reached your 30th birthday. I mean, people just, you know, they worship John Lennon. He wrote songs and Paul McCartney and he wrote songs and Bob Dylan and he wrote songs and Joni Mitchell and she wrote songs, Gordon Lightfoot, and they all wrote songs past the age of 30 that we all love. Imagine, working class hero, all kinds of songs, right? So obviously their life experience and their knowledge of what it is to be a human being, and their knowledge of the human condition, and their ability to express that in their chosen medium of music didn't disappear on their 29th birthday. Ah, you say, but they got started before their 29th birthday. Well, my answer to that is, so what? What difference does it make if you start at 25 or 45 or 65 if you've got something to say that resonates with other people? If you're expressing something in your soul and you've learned your craft and you're doing it well, then what difference does it make? Do you actually sit there and, and try to figure out how old somebody is before you listen to their music? I don't. 
Their age has nothing, nothing to do with it at all. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong there because one thing I will say is I may be less likely to listen to the music of somebody who's 14. However, if, they're, if they have a wonderful craft and they're putting themselves across well and they have something to say that touches me, I will listen to someone who's 14 or 24 or 34 or 84. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, and, and one other thing I wanted to say about this is the average life expectancy in North America right now is for most people, male and female, to live into their 80s. And uh, in the province that I live in, they just repealed the law that said that you have to retire at the age of 65. So really, you can keep working for as long as you like. As long as you're capable, you can still get your pension at 65 if you want, but if you want to keep working, that's fine too. So think about that for a moment. Uh, most of us spend 20 years growing up, you know, so we can say if the adult life starts at 20 or 21 or 18 or whatever, uh, and we live to be 80, 83, 85, right? We're saying the adult lifespan is 80 minus 20, that's about 60 odd years of adulthood. And what basically people who say that you need to have made your mark before the age of 28 or 29 are saying is that if in that first 10 years of adulthood you have not, quote, made it, unquote, then Screw the other 50 years, you're toast. You're toast. I disagree with that. There are artists who have been signed over the age of 29. Good example is Rita McNeil. She was signed at the age of 44. 44! And she wasn't young or considered particularly sexy or considered particularly pretty. But you know what? She has a beautiful soul and the, one of the most gorgeous voices around. And somebody heard that. She was out there. She was touring. She was selling records. And um, she made a name for herself. And a record label picked her up. Right? And there was another fellow, and unfortunately his name escapes me, but just recently, I think it was last year or the year before, a gentleman who was 41 was signed, a country singer, was signed by a label, and um, that was reported at the Taxi Road Rally convention or in Recording Magazine. I think it was in Recording Magazine, but they also mentioned it at the Road Rally. And I know there are other people. And the other thing I have to say about that is that I know traditionally, of course, in commercial music, the um, market has always been young folks between the ages of 14 and 21, sort of. So obviously, um, they want music, Nelly Furtado, and people like that who are really going to appeal to them, and that's understandable. But I also think that many of us over 30 buy lots of music and we make our own choices and we write we may buy you know tom jones and we might may buy uh, um, shania twain we may buy these artists who are currently in their 40s and still looking damn pretty good too you know uh yeah sorry i stumbled there but you know just because somebody's over 40 doesn't mean they aren't beautiful <laughs> You know, just look at Sheryl Crow, just look at Shania Twain, right? So beauty isn't about age, beauty is about spirit. And uh, I just think that if people want to consider the fact that uh, you haven't made it by the age of 29, uh, if they want to consider that as a limitation and that you should go then and, and take an accounting course or something like that, um, then that's their limitation. But you don't have to live that way. You can believe, as I do, that artistry knows no boundaries and knows no age and that the artistry of a 14-year-old 
is just as valuable as the artistry as a, of a 44-year-old and as the artistry of a 64-year-old, which is what Rita McNeil is now and Barbara Streisand is close to that. And uh, we still all go out and, and hear them sing. And uh, that's kind of my thought for tonight. And as I said in the beginning, uh, ad nauseum, I hope that made sense. It's just my opinion. I just, I, I don't like limits because I guess I grew up with a feeling of limitation. I really uh, ingested uh, the limitations that were kind of programmed into me and programmed into the society around me. And um, I believed those limitations and I own those limitations. And because of them, I didn't make it in my 20s because I didn't think that I had any potential. And I didn't think I had what it took. And I was terrified of even trying. And I also bought into the idea that uh, you can do music for a hobby but, uh, or art for a hobby, but uh, really you have to get a serious job and, and, uh, you know, and make a decent living and have a mortgage. And, Tupperware in your cupboard and, uh, and concentrate on, you know, painting the house and mowing the lawn and forget about this idea of uh, making music, uh, except now and then with the friends, you know, at a barbecue or something like that. And uh, when I woke up uh, one day and realized that my life was slipping away and the one thing that I loved about life the most, which was music, wasn't in my life at all, uh, I started to look at those limitations and I started to try to figure out a way to get past them. So for me, this issue of age is really personal as well as uh, something that I see permeates our society. Uh, we all worship youth. None of us want to get older. None of us want wrinkles, none of us want to sag, none of us want to die, and, and perhaps our worshiping of youth and our denial of life after 30 is part of our denial that life is finite. And I look at it in a different way. I say, I don't know how long I have, but by God, you're not gonna stop me from doing music and I don't care if I'm 30 or 40 or 80 or 110, I'm gonna do music every day of my life. And I hope that people will appreciate what I do. Uh, but if they don't, I still have to do it because it's, it's what makes me feel alive and it makes me feel connected to the universe and I love listening to other people's indie music and I hope that they listen to mine and enjoy it as well. So I'm going to leave it at that. Let me know what you think. Don't be too hard on me. Take care. Copyright 2007, Vicki Flowith, SoCan slash ASCAP.